I was worried with this book, like the people they're like, well, how can you all these are going into this world that's full of skeptics and educated, rational people. I'm like, well, yes, but some of them also know that just because they know a lot doesn't mean they know everything. You know, we know a lot about very little right now at this point in humanity. So when we can admit that to ourselves, we can say we don't have to know how everything works to know that it does. As we begin the podcast today, feel your angels surround you and sing to you. You are a miracle. Your life is a miracle. The good that you choose to do today is a miracle received by other souls. And just because you're you, God Universe Source sends you big and small miracles this day and every day. Right now, invite your angels to guide you. Ask God Universe Source for what your heart wants. See it as if you're in the future and what you want is already yours now. And so it is. I love you and I'm so grateful you're here that I have some freebies for you. I worked with the angels to create 31 meditations that are going to make you a magnet for miracles. Get them free at theangelmedium.com. Want to be my angel? Leave this podcast five stars or a five-star positive review, and I'll enter you into a drawing to win a free reading with me. Use the form at theangelmedium.com backslash contact to send me your contact info so I know who to call when you win. Use that same contact form to submit your angel stories, what you're struggling with, or a question, which I'll answer on this podcast or Instagram at Angel Podcast. That's theangelmedium.com backslash contact. Thank you for being my angel. And remember, angels and miracles are your birthright, and they're activated when you believe. So ask, believe, and receive your miracles. Hello, beautiful souls, and welcome back to the Angels and Awakening podcast. Friends, you know how much I love, 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 love the Astro Twins. If you don't know, and you're reading Elle magazine, they have been the ones in the back of your Elle magazine telling you what's coming up for your horoscopes for over a decade now. I think almost 15 years is it coming Mm -hmm. out of Yeah, 15 years this year. Holy cow. So- I've been reading for that long and they are always <laughs> just spot on. Ophi Adut is here. She's one of our astro twins and she is the author of the new book, The Astrology Advantage, Using Your Horoscope for Personal and Professional Success. Ophi, thank you for being here, but thank you for writing this book because it sounds just like a tool everybody needs to help guide them. Yeah. I mean, if you ask me, I'm a little biased, but yes, I think it can really help. So this book is much different. I've not studied astrology, but I've looked at different astrologers. And even before I met you two, I've told everybody, if you want to know like your horoscope and you want to see accurate information, go to Elle Magazine. Didn't always know that it was the Astro Twins writing it, but I was like, Elle Magazine is where it's at. And Lo and behold, Uh that's you and your sister. But this book is a little different. It's not your typical astrology book because you looked at things like the Enneagram, Myers-Briggs, and you really created a system and a format. Tell me if I'm wrong. I haven't seen this anywhere else. This is nowhere else on earth to be found. Well, yeah. I mean, it's an astrology shortcut that nobody ever shares that turns out to make it super easy. Um... I think what happens with astrology is people, it's a lovely, fun rabbit hole with tea parties and mad hatters and things. So people get really enchanted when they go down the astrology rabbit hole, but it gets complex. Suddenly you're speaking a whole other language, right? And you're like, yeah, that sounds so true, but I'm never going to remember that. So, so the book 
uses something called the chart dominance, the dominant influences in your chart to kind of bottom line your strengths, like an Enneagram, like a Myers-Briggs, because people want to use it now. It's gone widespread, the adoption of astrology, but nobody can understand it. So it's not, it's kind of a loss that doesn't have to happen. Right. For lack of a better reference, kind of like the Bible, right? There's so much to (laughs) the Bible, right? With astrology and you need those like study guides and formats to be able to break it down and really digest and apply it to, to your life. So Mm -hmm. I want to start out with this question. You talk at the beginning about archetypes. Yes. Why are archetypes important? Well, they give us something that we can hold on to, can grab on to. They're memorable. If you can't, so, you know, if we get information and it goes in one ear and out the other, which we get a lot of, then it doesn't ever become knowledge, which then would become wisdom after that. So what's happening is like we're learning and we're forgetting. But with an archetype, you remember it. It often sticks because it's rooted maybe in something that you already know before. So it can, can kind of, you know, that's how memory works and the brain works. It's like they say that neurons that fire together, wire together. So if you want to remember something, it has to kind of wire on to something you may already know. So what are the archetypes? And talk to me too about your I am system. So the I am system makes the chart, the whole chart. So if you see a a birth chart, if you've ever seen, it's the wheel and it has all the symbols, which are the planets and the zodiac signs. And I know how to read that. Some people know how to read that. They learn, they study, but the average person sees hieroglyphics, right? So the the archetypes are basically what are called the qualities. So we take, what we did was we took 13 parts of the chart. There's your sun sign, your moon sign, all the planets, the rising sign, which is like the outer you. Each of the planets in your chart represents a different facet of your personality. And then two points called the north and south node. So there's 13 points in the chart. You might, you can feel free to forget everything I just said too, if that's already too much astro jargon, but we take those 13 and you can measure how many of those 13 points are in fire, earth, air, and water signs. Those are the elements. And in these three classifications called the qualities or modalities, that's what we renamed. So there's the the cardinal, which are the four signs that start every season, and they're very pioneering. There's the fixed, which are the mid-season signs, and they're very planning, producing, building. And then there's the mutable, which are the ones that end every season. They polish, they edit, they connect people. And those are real, those three are really key parts of the personality, parts of a team, roles that we need for our society to function. So we renamed them, the cardinal, we renamed innovator, the fixed authority, and the mutable maven. So you look at what proportion of your chart is innovator, authority, and maven, which spells out I am. So that's our I am system. And it's so powerful because I am is just such a powerful phrase given to us. And I think it burrs a lot into creation. So how do Mm -hmm. we go from, you know, these archetypes and the I am system and really use the system for this professional success? Yeah, that's a great question. So what you do is the same way you would do your birth chart. You take your time, date, and place of birth. We have a calculator at astrostyle.com slash I am. I'm sure you'll put that in the notes. And you enter that. If you don't know your time, you may be off by one. So, you know, you may have to like fudge a little bit there to guess or just go, okay, I'm either this or the other. It'll probably become very clear to you though. Um, you look, you you put that in and then you look at which one you are. So, so for example, I of my 13, I'm six innovator, four authority and three maven. I'm somewhat even, but I'm an innovator. And from that, I can say, all right, It really does line up for me. The innovator is kind of the leader, the trailblazer, the pioneer. So I'm at my best when I'm creating something new, not following someone else's path. And if I am following someone else's else's path, I'll be reinventing it and putting my own personal stamp on it. The authority parts of me, which are still pretty strong, also wants to systematize, wants to build it into something like a 15-year career at L or 20-year business that I have. So I do, you know, 
definitely spend a lot of time building things out. And then I'm lower on the Maven, which is more of the buzzing and the promoting. And I, even if I do it, cause I have to, I don't always love that. So, you know, like it takes, I'm a little reluctant to get on camera and make social media posts. I'd rather be off inventing something like an innovator. So I'll hire someone who's a Maven and they'll do that for me sometimes. So that's one of the ways you can use it. I love it. Are we able to do any of it here? Yeah, let's uh, do yours. Join me for these upcoming events. We're hosting the Angel Reiki Mediumship School live in person Again, this fall and spring. Event dates are up at theangelmedium.com backslash events. Space is limited. Reserve your spot today. And as a bonus, I'm giving you access to our eight-week online Angel Reiki Mediumship School so that you can get started as soon as you register. Don't want to come in person? That's okay. You can still earn your certifications in mediumship, angel messages, and energy healing in our eight-week online program with a new online class and Zoom calls starting on the first of each month. Did you know one Wednesday evening of each month, I host a free group prayer event open to all, and right afterwards, I teach you a new tool to work with your angels or loved ones in heaven. Sign up today free at theangelmedium.com backslash events, and we'll send you the Zoom link to participate. You'll also find details on our upcoming spiritual retreat, October 4th, 5th, and 6th, 2024 at theangelmedium.com backslash events. So excited to work with you. Now back to the show. Yes. So if somebody's so. listening on the podcast, you can go over to my YouTube channel, just search Julie Jancis, J-A-N-C-I-U-S, and you can see Ophi and I and her screen, and she's pulling everything up on her website. So you can see how this system actually works in live time. Normally, this would bring up that circular chart, but this is like a breakdown of how your elements and qualities, which is the I am, all break down. So you are dominant as an innovator. You're six innovator like me, five authority and two maven. And then you're two fire, three earth, five air and three water. So you're an air innovator. And we actually have a little book called the 84 types because there's 84 possible combinations of the elements and the qualities. Some people could be evenly spread between some of them. Some people could be a hybrid of two of the qualities, an innovator authority or an innovator maven or an authority maven. So we put together all of the combinations and I'll tell you which one you are, which by the way, people get this book as a gift with their book when they order it from us. Oh, so, yay. Yeah, oh, that's so. awesome. So where do they need to go to order that? Astrostyle.com? Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. It's all there. So you're the wind shifter, an inventive and adaptable visionary who skillfully navigates change and creates new possibilities. I would say that's true about you. Thank you. So, you know, what's funny is like you're a Capricorn, right? So Capricorn is an earth sign, but you can see you're actually lower on earth and high on air. An air innovator is like a Libra, actually, because that's the cardinal air sign. So so even though like you're a Capricorn, that's always going to be who you are. That's kind of the, the main character of your chart is your sun sign, your zodiac sign. But the overall temperament is to be this air innovator. So you like change, you like ideas, you like to pioneer things. You maybe with the the low maven, maybe you also don't love having to go on social media or promote yourself as much or buzz about certain things. Like you should be inventing your own systems and ideas, which you do. Mm -hmm. It's great because I know you're leading a retreat. So, which is a really, really good thing for an air innovator to bring people together to share ideas but you can also like kind of happily go off to your own island and create things too as an innovator 
Yes, absolutely. Well, yeah. And that's why, you know, so many people talk about wanting to be grounded and I like a little bit of grounding, but is that why I like being floaty and absolutely energy? Yes. Yep. Yep. And that's what's so funny. Cause you might be like, Oh, I'm an earth sign. Why don't I like to be grounded? Because you're predominantly air. So you want your earth sign who needs their wings. Yeah. So, so how yeah. do I take the wind shifter and apply it and understand where I can use that personally and professionally? Yeah. So personally as an innovator, so our book, The Astrology Advantage, like literally once you do the quiz and find out what you are, the entire book is a guide to how to use your I am archetype for relationships, career, team building, communication, parenting, style. You know, the reason we did it is because after doing thousands of people's readings and charts, we saw how, how many people are just beating themselves up for not fitting this mold or this model that they're given for who to be in the world. And we yeah. thought it was so sad. Like, you know, you're designed the way you're designed. So, you know, but you're spending so much of your time feeling ashamed, hiding, trying to be this way that does not come naturally to you. So for example, in relationships, the innovator needs a lot of space to create, doesn't always like to be in conversation. Sometimes an innovator will marry or partner with, for example, an authority, and the authority is very regimented with time. The innovator, <laughs> <laughs> whereas the innovator will get struck with inspiration at 3 a.m. and just needs to get out of bed and write about it or needs to be left alone for a week, like to yeah. download some new methodology or a book or whatever. Like I know you've published your own book, for example, right? So but then the I was just feeling that yesterday <laughs> too, because um it's back to school time and I have been Ooh, spending worst. so much time this summer. We just had the most magical summer of all time. It was just fantastic. But now we're all kind of like getting back into it. And I feel like I've I'm in COVID lockdown, like three months of every year, because I have a teacher oh. for a husband. So we're all oh, God. together three months of every year. And I was like, for the last three days, I've been noticing we're all in the same room, but we're all doing stuff. Like we've got our heads down. We're working on this. We're working on that. And there isn't that same connection where I felt guilty, but we're just kind of getting back into things. And you're totally right. When I have that innovative vibe of like, okay, this is coming in, which it all is. I think this rest and relaxation that I got this summer just brought in like a wave of new ideas and just different ways I want to mm -hmm. go. And the angels are just showing me all different ways that humanity is being led. And so I'm like, okay, well, let's oh, dive in this. there. Yes. And that's so great because I mean, you're pretty high authority, so you will be structured and that's going to be a little bit at battle with your innovator need. So innovators in the book we share live in the future and need spaciousness to go commune with the muse, go to like the ancient Greeks said two types of time, chronos, which is chronological and kairos, which is quantum timelessness. So the innovator we share how they need to spend time in Kronos. I'm sure your magical summer vacation in New York was like, that's innovator paradise because you're yes. surrounded by innovation, all these, you know, ideas that people come to New York City to create the impossible and actually make it real. So first of all, you're swimming in your own best waters and the city never sleeps. So you're, you know, you're in Times Square and it's like, doesn't matter what time of day it is. There's always something on that's innovator paradise too. You know, for an authority, they might be, and I don't know what your husband is. You'd have to look, but like an authority would be like, oh no, it's nine 30. I'm in bed. Like, I don't yeah. do that. I like, for I get sure. up at this time. I have my tea. I have my regimens. I have my root, but that's what they need to feel. He's anchored. so regimented. He mm -hmm. ate the exact same lunch every single day for 50 <laughs> years like the first 15 wow. years of, he's just so structured with everything he's a libra okay okay yeah which is funny because that is what the air innovator is a libra my grandfather was a libra and after he retired at 60 
five till the age of 90. He had the whole the same lunch for the rest of his life, too. Granted, it was a spread of cheeses and cold cuts and <laughs> breads, but it was an identical. He was actually a maven, I think, which is kind of funny, but he was definitely not an innovator. <laughs> and yeah, that kind of regimented thing can feel so like... The only way an innovator would be regimented is because like they don't want to think about lunch. So they're because their mind is on something else that they're building. So they're like, OK, fine. Just like I'm an innovator and I've been I bought five of the same black Amazon dress that I found because it's perfect. And I don't want to think about what I'm going to wear. Yes. I got stuff to do. <laughs> yes. Well, I think that's just a fabulous fashion philosophy as well. <laughs> My mom used to always say, when you find something that you like, buy it in every color. And uh -huh. yes, why not? Just buy the same thing. And I love it. It's perfect. Yeah. But that would be appalling to a maven because they really? will change their outfit five times a day. You know, they're like, yeah. life is a costume party. They're all about being in the moment and having fun and making their social media posts or whatever like not all of them like to be on social media but they they definitely like to perform and so they've always they need a trunk full of costumes they are Where the am most I on the maven high. scale you're the low one you're low i'm one. the lowest okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> and does that does that track for you I love changing my outfits. I don't like getting ready every day, but when I get ready, I like to really get ready. And no, yeah, social media, if I didn't have to do it, I wouldn't. I have to tell myself and the angels encourage me every morning in meditation. It's not about you like having to do something. It's about you getting to share our messages with the world. And exactly. so I reframe and I go, okay, then we're just going <laughs> to share the messages uh -huh. and and that's it. Talking about this, I have been talking to some of my social media friends who have much, much bigger accounts than I do. And just from a professional standpoint, and I think the listeners would enjoy this from you too. You've seen business go through so many different stages at, from like 2010 to 2015, and then just this vast change 2015 yeah. to now, where we've all been looking at algorithms and the algorithms want this and they want this. I'm done with all of it. Like I am oh, so God. just done. I just want to bring through what the angels have to say and to hell with wherever it lands for people, to hell with cool. whatever the algorithms want. What do you think? Where is this going? And yeah, that's a great question. I think that it's really important to find your voice and what your thing is, like you're saying, and then make sure that you amass, you know, a, a mailing list of people who are aligned with that because the algorithms are always changing and without notice. And they're going to more and more as more AI and tech gets rolled out. But what's what you what people can't take away is the emotional connection that you have with your audience. If you start doing it for the gram or the algorithm instead of the people or the person, it's more important than ever to know kind of what your person, your kindred spirit person, as I like to say, wants the most from you. What is the problem that you're solving for them that they that they feel that you solve best or are one of the best people? Yeah. And Make that connection. It's like, it's always easy to forget that someone who you're not really intimately connected with texted you or called you or, oh yeah, I forgot about them. But once you make that connection, which you are, because you have such a great message for everybody with your angels and their angels, and you are who you are and you're there to serve. Like if they see that, then, yeah. then you, you don't have to worry. That's what no. I believe. A hundred percent. Well, I really like to spend a lot of time writing and I've been spending a lot more time putting my energy into writing a weekly blessed email that just brings oh, through what I'm learning from the angels, sharing about intuition, because I think that this world would change if everybody just lived a heart led life and allowed their intuition to guide them. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think for you as an innovator, speaking directly, conversationally, want like a, like you're having a conversation with one other person and you're sharing something that like 
is a little esoteric. It doesn't matter. Innovators like are always 10 years ahead of their time. So like, it's okay if the rest of the world doesn't get it. We're in this protective circle together with, that's what innovators create these new paradigms and circles and ideas. And then when they get more mainstream, the authority can come and make it into something a little bit more of a business. But it's it's really important for you as an innovator not to start with thinking about what kind of business model it could be, but yeah. like thinking about what people need from you the most right now. I mean, that's so spot on. When I've been in different business classes here in Chicagoland with entrepreneurs from the city, that's such a big topic that has just always gotten me because I'm like, what do you mean? Like you're creating five years ahead. Like the yeah. angels are just no, we talking don't do about, that. no, the angels are talking about what we need to do next month and over the next six months and over the next year. And then beyond that, I don't know what messages they have to share, but we shall see when that time comes. And, you know, you may be the smartest person in the room for that because like, you know, they say man plans, the universe laughs. It's like we as innovators are telling people you actually are co-creating this world and this universe. So what you do now and in a minute and in an hour and in a week matters more than what you think you're going to be doing in 10 years. Don't tell that to an authority, though. They are already on their 10, 20 year plans, reverse engineering. <laughs> so but this is once again, I'm going to get on my starry soapbox and just say this is why I feel so passionate about the I am system, because everybody is trying to do it in this way that's probably most suited to authorities to 33.333% of the quality. So like, great, if that works for an authority to make a 10 year plan, because they maybe want to get funding and they have to prove a model, a financial model to an investor, even though like what they're saying is no more likely to happen in 10 years than what you would say. It's like, it's really just maybe so they can get funding or grow, scale in a way. So Tell the lie. I don't know. <laughs> you Use your data. <laughs> yeah. You just put something together for me that I think has been just sitting in the back of my mind for a long time, which is I had a psychic once tell me, Julie, you take it too personally. Like it's kind of like instruments and orchestra. If you play two together in the wrong way, they don't harmonize. They don't sound good together. And I've had that energy where I just want, I just want to have peace with everybody. I want to be on the same page with everybody. I want to have that connection. And then yeah. you just come up with some people who probably were authorities looking back, uh, whether that be bosses or different people that I'm working in entrepreneurial groups with, and they're like, do it this way. And yes, and it just doesn't flow. And I used to think I was bad or I was wrong or that like they had some tip or some trick or some secret that I didn't know. So I was behind. So I was always yeah. trying to catch up. But <laughs> I love the way that you're kind of breaking this out for people, because once you do use the system that you've created, you can go, oh, I'm not bad and wrong. They're not bad or wrong. Like we both you just function in different systems. That's exactly the hope. Like I'm not, uh, yeah, I'm not trying to have authority or authority-esque people stop being that way. But like we all live in the tyranny of everybody else is normal instead of in the bl the bliss of our own because we don't have space for both to coexist it's like we're always in this arm wrestling match whether it's in our personal lives our parenting partner uh, romantic partnerships co-workers it's like we're always in this arm wrestling match like you know when you split the wishbone or something like whose way is going to be the way instead of like how can we create a world or a workplace or a family where our ways find the right proportioning with each other and can all, even though it gets a little, it's experimental and a little friction, like, you know, I mean, I do that with my, with my company, we have Tali and I are innovators, and then we have two authorities and they do run all the operations and customer service as it turns out, which they love, you know, they really love a task, but they need to be given a bulleted list and left to do that. And without them, we wouldn't have a foundation. But, you know, if, if I tried to do that too much, I would never build the kind of magical network that we have that brings, we wouldn't have anything to work on if I was doing that, you know, all day. Yeah. yeah. 
I wrote about it a little bit in my first book, Angels and Awakening, but I had this situation and I hope the audience doesn't think I'm a meanie for saying this. I don't mean to come off that way, but <laughs> spirit says it'll be healing for some people to hear. I'm one of those people that I have had to learn how to break down what I do for other people so that they know how to walk through the steps. But if you would have come to me 15 years ago and been like, Julie, how do you do this? I'd be like, I don't know. Like you just- right do it. And so I was in event planning and alumni relations at colleges and universities and fundraising for billion dollar donors here in Illinois. And cool. they would be like, okay, well, you're, you got these events. This is great, but how are you going to execute it? And I'm like, what do you mean? You just do it. Like, I just, I know right. all the things in my head, you just go do it. And so this boss of mine created, no joke, a 60 page template of form that I had to fill out for every single event of walking through exactly what I'm doing and how I'm doing it and how I'm promoting it. And I'm like, oh. I don't understand why you want me to spend two weeks working on this 60 page form when I could spend all of that time, like just going out and doing it. And I felt a lot of shame in that period mm -hmm. of my life, like that she was like, you're bad, you're wrong, you know, like, and I've always just wanted to be like, hope she's seen the business, like hope she's seen how well everything's doing. Yeah. I mean, and you don't want to be vengeful, but you can't no, help but be like your policies works. and protocol. Like, you know, it's funny because I have, I can completely relate to my own, to that in my own versions of that. Like, I'm like, I can't reverse engineer the magic, but what I had, but it's like, actually I realized I probably could, but I don't want to because it feels like a waste of time. But what I, I have had someone do is kind of shadow me and write down what I did. Cause I'm like, help me help you. So what we, we've done at my company is we do SOPs, standard operating procedures. Yeah. We do them one task at a time. And I will turn on Loom, the screen recording app, and record myself while I'm doing it so that it's done in real time, not like going back and explaining step by step. Like, first, you go out with the donor to lunch and ask them about themselves and show genuine interest in them, and they like <laughs> you, and then they give you a billion dollars. That's how it actually works, okay? Not like, you don't, people are not robots, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But no, I think that this system just brings so much peace and yeah. allows a lot of the shame that all yeah. of us have felt for different reasons and different ways throughout our lives. We take that shame on and we carry it throughout our lives. And this book can help us release a lot of that shame and really free us to just be ourselves. I'm so glad you you clued in on the the shame because that really is the driving emotion that people are, you know, whether it's like, oh, I can't sit still in this office. I can't get anything done in this open plan office. And I'm I've got this great big job where I don't want to give up the fancy title and credentials, but I hope nobody sees how much I'm failing because I just can't concentrate listening to other people's conversations. And then we turn, like you said, we turn on ourselves. We go, what's wrong with me? Why don't I want to fill out the 60 page form? I must be too immature for this job. Never mind the results I'm producing. There's something wrong with me. Why can't I? Exactly. I should. And like, no, you freaking shouldn't. Why can't they let you do it your way or articulate what it is that they need from you mm -hmm. on this form to do their job? If you're preventing them from doing their job and not filling out the form, okay, great. Let's find a way we all can get what we need. But like, I will dominate you and make you do it this way that is excruciating to your soul so that I can just be right. <laughs> like you yeah. said, what yeah. is, what comes of that? Random question, kind of on topic, kind of not. I was having a membership meeting with my group last night and this came up, but when it comes to manifestation, I've been swimming in this and playing with this for over 25 years. And I've started to take specific numbers out of my manifestation like board or wall 
not applying those because I think that even the mm. numbers that we think sometimes can limit us. So I'm wondering when you yeah. manifest, do you include numbers in there, specific numbers and goals, or do you just kind of manifest in a way where you let the universe take you where they want to take you? You know, my tendency is to to not use the numbers, but if I do, I do them in a like symbolic way. I think that's really smart because yeah, they can suppress the imagination and possibility, you know, for example, with my book, I was like, someone's like, oh, you should try to make it a bestseller. Okay. Well, that means you have to sell 10,000 copies before the date that it comes out. I was like, I'll play that game. I have no idea if I could, but let's see what happens if I play. Yeah. And at the moment, I haven't sold 10,000 copies or anything near it, um, which, of course, like, you know, you're not supposed to admit that, right? You're supposed to pretend that, oh, doubled that because, yeah. you know, what if they think I'm a fraud that I didn't? But it's like, what? But I got really amazing insights. I was like, okay, what does somebody need to sell 10,000 copies of a book? Well, they need to already be on the keynote conference circuit and they need to be commanding a very large fee for their keynotes because they would trade that fee for a number of books. So if I wanted it to look like I'd sold a thousand of these books, I would need to swap out a $33,000 fee for speaking which I'm not getting offered at this moment yet, but maybe, but maybe I will after the book comes out. I'm, you know, yes, I'm ready yes. to be, I'm ready to be offered that. <laughs> but like, that's not how I've built my business. It's a new sort of businessy offering. I've been in the consumer and entertainment realm, quietly doing this for group coaching and I haven't gone mainstream with it. So when I, th when I learned that, I was like, okay, I'm not there yet. So that's not going to be the way it, that would happen. But I wouldn't know that if I didn't play that game with that number. And then I had to go through a process of being like, how about I release the attachment to the number and show up and serve, which I did all along. I tried a lot of different things like free webinars and getting people to try out the I am system, which was joyful and felt good. Yeah. So through this like kind of four month process, I was like, release the attachment to that. Like that doesn't mean it won't, you know, maybe the week it comes out, I'll be on so many podcasts and 10,000 people will buy it. Great. Yeah. Awesome. But it also made me realize, do I, what do I need to play for the stamp of approval from someone else's arbitrary decision of what makes it a bestseller? Right. No, I'm going to focus on changing people's lives and helping them feel the relief you just felt around the shame you've been carrying. That's a bestseller to me. So oh, you couldn't have described that better. <laughs> yes. So, and just kind of going back for people who don't understand the business, what you're talking about is when you go to a publisher and you go, I, I got this book idea, they go, okay, that's great. What's the book idea? Told me about it in a very, very large document. That's about yes. 60 to 80 pages, a book proposal. And also in that book proposal, you have to map out very specifically how you're going to sell the book and get the book out because I would say the authors are probably doing about 80% nowadays, aren't they? Yeah. You do do a lot of the marketing. So, yeah. you know, it's, yeah, yeah. It's a lot, it's a heavy lift, but you know, they want it to, the pre-sale phase is like before the book is even on the shelves, you, you know, you would need to sell a certain amount to prove I think it's just so they know how many to print really sure. but honestly it's it's a mark of some kind of you know uh, best-selling status now I will say I had a lot of fun playing that game because what I did was go imagine uh an astrology book being a bestseller I mean uh, there have been some before yeah. but like what would what would one have to do? Who would I have to be? How would I have to stretch myself? So for me as an innovator, that was also a fun experiment, but I had to constantly not be attached to that outcome. Like I want it, but I also, what I want as the the highest good of the book is for it to like get out there to as many people as possible. But it's really, it's hard to hold both of those spaces. So I, I, took, I looked at it as like my own personal summer Olympics spiritually to do that. Yes. Yes. So 
what would that look like as a manifestation statement so that people can kind of apply this to their own lives? I'm kind of reframing a lot within my life and the summer Mm -hmm. kind of ushered that in. And it's not this statement on a manifestation board of, I have to be a New York Times bestseller, a multi New York Times bestseller multiple times over, or I have to sell, sell this many copies. It's more so God bless this book. It has reached, because I always try and put it in the future as if it's already happened. It mm-hmm. has reached as many people as it can bless and help prosper and benefit. And and mm-hmm. then that's it, because you really want the work to go to the people who it's called to. Yeah. And books call to people. They really do. And I would actually even make my manifestation like, let me have the being and presence and impact of a New York Times bestselling author with this book so that I can reach as many people as possible with this inspiring, empowering message. Allow me to find the courage and light within myself to be that bold and be out there. Because listen, like introducing an astrology book as a tool for business. I mean, people are loving it who I'm giving it to, but it's like they have to wrap their heads around it. Like they've been using Myers-Briggs and all these other personality tests. Little do they know that those are, you know, coming from some of the same roots as well of measuring the, you know, and this one's easier. You don't have to take a 70 question quiz all you need is your birthday so (laughs) it takes two minutes and you got it as you saw so you have to be aware when you're doing manifesting of like what the 3d world and what the 5d world is currently ready for like i'm bringing a 5d concept into the 3d world and there's going to be an adjustment period for some people Luckily, they've been warmed up by apps and by plant medicine and angels and all the things that have become more known, you know, have have crossed the tipping points. It's a very good time, too. But like if if you're someone who's listening and you want to manifest something in the world that's healing and you're posting Instagrams every day and they're getting two likes and it's your mom and your sister or your best friend and you're feeling like, should I keep doing this? Da 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 da. Because I know there's so many people out there who are like, I want to help, but nobody even wants it. What the heck am I doing? Right? Yeah. So, so this yeah. book is also find your I am archetype because maybe you're just, maybe you can do it a little bit differently. Maybe there's a way like the authority is best doing it as a how-to, the maven in community, partnering up with someone, the innovator in the ways that you're naturally discovering and giving yourself permission, like tuning out the, all the how-to stuff after a certain point and being like, okay, I I learned the rules. Now I'm going to break them and do it my way. Absolutely. Absolutely. You get to be at home in alignment with how you're doing things in the world. And then it feels like a completely different ball game. You feel at mm-hmm. home. Uh, I feel at home most, like you said, when I'm just bringing through the messages. And I just want to thank the audience for listening because, and I want to ask a couple of questions about like just astrology and where we're going. I want to thank everybody for listening to this and allowing, you know, Ophi and I to just be really vulnerable and talk about this because- Mm -hmm. It's not stuff that's really talked about openly and widely throughout the community. You often have to pay tens of thousand dollars to kind of be behind the scenes in some different groups to be like, oh, this is how things really work. This is the system behind the scenes. But there's so much love from the authors that I bring on the show. I really try and bring authors on the show who I believe are just these angel messengers, even if they don't consider themselves to be. The angels have so many messages and they don't care if you consider yourself an angel messenger. Books oftentimes (laughs) are just these beautiful gifts of downloads and information coming through from the other side. I can't wait for this gift that you have of this book to be shared with the world. Oh, thank you. I can't wait for your next book because I feel one coming in. Yay, yay. Oh yeah, we're gonna have to talk offline about that. I'm writing (laughs) the third one. You know, not to go political because I I don't want to go political here, but just like for the world and humanity, where are we going with astrology? 
election season and astrology. So very interestingly, next year, 2025, three major outer planets are going to change signs. First time in our lives for many of us that will experience. Second for like maybe people in their 80s, but Uranus is going into Gemini for the first time since the 40s, the 1940s, um, Saturn into Aries. That one, not our first time, only that was last 96. Neptune is going into Aries first time in our lives because it was last during the Civil War. So like these are the generational planets making huge shifts. So they're going to go advance a sign and then they're going to go back but they're going to put a toe in the water and we have pluto with its first year in aquarius so what that means is like our culture's values and priorities are going to go whoop, they're going to repoint give us a sneak preview for a couple months and then go back throughout the year so we are at this huge turning point i just read a, an article that Elle Vest put out about the feminization of wealth, how women are inheriting wealth or making so much money that we can make decisions. We're getting financially educated and how that's going to shift the, the culture for everybody. We do have a female presidential candidate who is a real contender. I don't know, I, you know, like you, I believe we influence each day. So I don't know. Both Trump and Kamala Harris have equal possibilities of winning based on astrological favor and drawbacks. So I really think the message of this year right now is it's up to us. We we named 2024 the year of the transcendent leader because it's an invitation and a call to find the leader in, in ourselves and know that we, no matter who wins the presidential election, we will be impacted by it. But you actually can be the president of your life in every moment. Not just that, but the angels have really been bringing in this message of regardless what happens with, I mean, and there's a lot happening around the world with everybody's politics. Yeah. Yeah. You can be a creator of change within your community and you can learn from wherever you start and grow upon that and create massive change. I want to keep reminding right. people that there's an author that we had in the podcast podcast before who talked about this one chemical that you have within the brain. And it's not a term that's easy to remember, but those who have more of this chemical, they can list off all these different behaviors that you would wow. do. And those who have less of the chemical, they can list off a different list of behaviors. So wow. they can just look at your brain, see how much you have of this chemical and say, you're going to vote this way, or you're going to vote this oh way. Oh my God. Um, they can say you're more likely to write a check to donate to an organization or volunteer your time. So there's a lot happening within the chemicals of wow. our brain. And I heard that and it just made me feel so much love and unification that we're all here, we're all needed. And uh, I hope that that notion just kind of brings us together. Overall for 2025, what's the deal with 2025 a lot astrologically? <laughs> we're calling it the year of the divine pendulum because you may swing out a little bit of your comfort zone. You may have to. It's about finding equilibrium through exploring things that are not the perspectives that you've used in the past. Like the lens that you've used before is not going to give you the full picture, no matter what, no matter yeah. what quote unquote side. The whole idea of sides is hopefully going to go away. I mean, I hope this lines up with what you're getting from the angels, but it sounds like it is. It's like, you know, there's that that story about the fish that are in like a fish bowl and like someone is like says to the fish, how's the water? And it says, what water? You know, it's yes. like, you know, we don't even realize what we're swimming in. So yeah, we're all on the same side. We're all on the same team as a collective humanity. I yeah. love that. And we all have to swim in the energy here. Oh, I just love getting to spend my time with you anytime I get to it. It's just fabulous. Thank you so much, Ovi, for being here. Uh, your new book, The Astrology Advantage, is on sale everywhere. We'll put that in the show notes. But where can people find you, the book, and yeah. where would you have them go? Astrostyle.com. And follow us on Instagram at Astro Twins. And yeah, let us know when you get your book and what your archetype is and how it resonates for you. 
Yay. And as we get closer over to 2025, open invitation. If, oh, if you yes. and Tally want to come back on the show, we'd love to have you and dive yeah, in let's too. Absolutely do predictions for everybody then. We're working on them now. Oh my God. Well, and you're just so spot on. My friends know that I'm a Capricorn. And so they sent me your video yesterday of <laughs> how Capricorns are really having a lot of luck in this Mercury retrograde. And I was like, oh my God, she has my number because- I'm so glad to hear that. I have gotten like good luck phone call after good luck phone call after good luck phone call all week. Hey. And it started the exact date that you said it would. Oh my God. I mean, I'm just- <laughs> And and like, that's the thing. Like, I was worried with this book, like the people be like, well, how can you all these are going into this world that's full of skeptics and educated, rational people. I'm like, well, yes, but some of them also know that just because they know a lot doesn't mean they know everything. You know, we know a lot about very little right now at this point in humanity. So when we can admit that to ourselves, we can say we don't have to know how everything works to know that it does. Well, every time I've looked at astrology from different angles, and I can't wait to sit down and, and read mine about the wind shifter from this clan, my God, has it changed how I navigate this world and yeah. made me more confident in myself. And I just appreciate that from astrologists. Yeah. And that's how I feel about angels, like knowing that there are, because, you know, you make me believe that there are with the way you present that. I'm like, it's like, okay, I'm not alone. And if I know I'm not alone, because whether it's the stars or angels or whatever the helpers are, like, it's really important for us to know we're not alone. We already know that the impact, they say the impact of loneliness and isolation is a an epidemic and a pandemic. But where does loneliness come from? I think that has sort of spread this idea that like we can't be alone and with our own, in our own company. I enjoy my own company. I love being alone because I know I'm not. I know that I have angels. I know that I have the stars. I never feel alone. I think that should be a title of a book. You're not alone. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So. Oh. Thank you, friend. I just want to reach out and hug you. <laughs> I'm sending you a virtual hug from New York. Yes. Mm. And for everybody listening, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for sharing your time with us. Check the show notes below for all the links that we talked about today. I'd love to work with you if it resonates. Book a reading to get messages from your angels right away. Or join my membership or my Angel Reiki Mediumship School. What's the difference? The Angel Reiki Mediumship School certifies you in mediumship, angel messages, and energy healing all at once. Some join simply to develop all of their unique spiritual gifts to the max, and others want to start their own spiritual business. Both are perfect. You can take the Angel Reiki Mediumship School online with Zoom meetings or in person in Oak Brook, Illinois in November or April. Bonus, when you register for the in-person Angel Reiki Mediumship School today, you also get the eight-week online program free with Zoom meetings included. So you can literally start today. How is that different from my membership? My membership gives you everything you need to care for and nourish your soul. The fact is our world neglects the soul. Most people only attend to their own soul when they have a big life crisis. But your soul is not a problem to be solved. Your soul is starving to be seen, heard, nourished, and cared for. Your soul is speaking to you, and it wants you to hear it. That's what my membership does. It nourishes your soul. It shows you there is an entire universe living within you, how you can access your own angels, messages, and live a life of wonder, magic, enchantment, and miracles. At your request, we changed the membership so that you can join anytime, any month. 
you can purchase readings, the school, my membership, all over at theangelmedium.com. As we close today, ask your angels to be with you and allow these messages to speak to your heart. Your angels say you are connected to the universe and the universe is connected to you. All you ever need is within you right now at this very moment. Stay true to yourself. Don't betray yourself by going against the intuitive feelings you get. Trust your own inner wisdom. Why? The world needs you. The world needs you to dream big and for you to discover what's possible for yourself. Step into the energy of all that you are. Smile, laugh, and allow your heart to be healed. Ask your angels to bring you big, big miracles, prosperity, and to open big doors. Believe in miracles. You have a big purpose and friends, inspiration is everywhere. Everywhere you look, there are people in need of help, love, and support. Find a way to be of service. Start right now by asking yourself, what good shall I do this day? Love is who you are. Joy is your nature. Remember, God only ever has three answers to your prayers. Yes, not yet, or I have something so much better in mind you can't possibly believe it. Nothing is impossible and nothing can stop your determined soul from succeeding. Now go about your day and expect the most wonderful things to happen.